Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. We're also streaming to you live on yorbamedia.com and broadcasting to you from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM Cleartone Studios. I'm joined by Vincent Molinari. He is the founder of Gate Global Impact and our, our, our crowdfunding and impact investing correspondent. But his special guest with us is Daniela Foster, CEO and co-founder of Emergent Leaders Network and director of public-private partnerships for the U.S. Department of State. Uh, Vince, if we could start off with you, I, I, I would. I, I'm sorry, I took so much. Uh, Daniel, you got me all worked up here about this topic, but I wanted to back up a little bit, Vince, and allow you time to please. Please ask the litany of questions that you have for Danielle on our show. Well, I, I think I have to take the opportunity to make sure Daniela comes back, uh, perhaps after April, if she gives us a window into uh, some things that she has going on at that point. And, and you know, I've, I've got a list that's going to go on for two years for Daniela, so <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have her back again for sure, I hope. We'll just scratch uh, the surface I, I guess today. the first thing I, you know, I wanted to throw out there, Michael, uh, and I think it's a, you know another question that comes to mind for a lot of people. When you think about innovative finance, you think about crowdfunding, you certainly don't think about the State Department. So, Danielle, I'd, lo- I'd love to know how you got into crowdfunding, how you brought the State Department uh, into this sector. Yeah. So, well, I recently wrote an article on crowdfunding diplomacy where I make some recommendations on what government can do for crowdfunding and how we can kind of get into that. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. But my crowdfunding journey and experience actually started years ago. My initial sort of hands-on introduction to crowdfunding was actually inspired by my birthday, of all things. I had (laughs) just... I know it's it's funny. We won't ask. We we won't ask which one. Yeah, no, they're all the same one. (laughs) (laughs) So you know, I had just co-founded the Emergent Leaders Network, a 501c3 nonprofit. We provide micro scholarships, mentoring, and professional networks to community college students. And I decided on my birthday to run a a crowdfunding campaign for micro scholarships. And I was able, you know, to take this idea and really engage the the community. I was doing it for a community college in California, one that I'm actually an alum of and I went to while I was in high school. Um, And I really, you know, believed in it and knew that what we needed was to raise money and raise support for these micro scholarships. And the crowdfunding campaign was uh, a way to do that. And, of course, like the evolution of crowdfunding, you know, early crowdfunding was very much about kind of cause-related initiatives, how you can raise money for various causes, which I still think is a great idea. But it's been really interesting to see it evolve from just causes through to businesses and to look at how businesses are now crowdsourcing ideas and products and innovation and then, you know, crowdsourcing to, to get their businesses out there and musicians to get their CDs out there and then, you know, really looking at this next step in evolution for crowdfunding, which is equity crowdfunding. So I've been following it for a while and one of, you know, the biggest challenges that we see around the world is we have a million alumni who've been through um, programs, you know, sort of people-to-people exchange programs and who've been, you know, over to the U.S. And one of the biggest challenges is they go home, they get really excited, they take the ideas of entrepreneurship and and innovation back to their communities and they want to do something, but they frequently don't have the access to capital. Um, And going back to government for that just isn't a solution um, given the economic realities that we're living in. So I think the potential um, of crowdfunding to do a couple of things. One, uh, to really encourage them to do something with the um, ideas that they have, because in a, there are lots of good ideas out there, but actually getting it to the point where you can make something happen and, and start a business and spur um, economic growth is really what it's all about. So um, from that perspective, it made sense, hey, okay, well, we, ha- we, we do things like, you know, run innovation funds and stuff like that. What if we looked at doing this through crowdfunding? What if we took this onto a crowdfunding platform, giving people a platform to tell their stories, educating them on how to actually run a successful crowdfunding campaign, and then from there, let them run with it. So really, you know, empowering and teaching people um, how to fish versus just giving them a fish. So that's one of the reasons I think crowdfunding um, is really interesting. Brilliant. Absolutely. I applaud, I applaud your ever. Br- absolutely brilliant. Please, Vince, go on. 
Well, I, I just think, I, and I think that's another great segue when you think about creating opportunity, creating sustainability, job creation, and, and you can start from a body of a million alum uh, that are already through a process that's, that's been educated, uh, that, that is tremendous. Um, you know, and I see another parallel running with that, uh, and, and I'd be curious, Daniela, you have thought of crowdfunding tied into impact investing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think, you know, when I look at crowdfunding and just even my initial experience with it on the cause end, what I think is um, really interesting that's happening is you, you have a continuum. You have, hey, I can um, crowdfund for uh, the school in my community to help make my community better, on through to, hey, you know what, I have a business idea that's going to help me launch my business and create jobs. Then all the way through to, you know what, I have a really good business idea that can get investment and bring in an investors. And that, I think, is incredibly game-changing, um, which is why the equity crowdfunding space, I think, is very interesting. And really, we have a continuum. There are different types of crowdfunding. And I think looking at that as a pipeline, well, how do we actually, how do we get people through a pipeline? How do we get you know, folks who are just doing cause-related stuff uh, and who might have nonprofits thinking about the business side of that, right? Because um, one of the things I always say, even with partnerships, we started out looking at it like fundraising. And I can tell you that that is just not a successful model because funds come, they go, it's not sustainable, you don't have a business model, you're not really creating value. But when you can look at, all right, how can we put a business model around something um, it becomes more sustainable, you're creating value, you're bringing more people in. And some of these projects we see evolve and get to the stages where they're full-on viable businesses. Um, and not every uh, organization or project or entity is going to get there. But for the few that do, I think really um, providing a certain amount of education around it and having a pipeline in place is really key. Well, we, you know, we only have three more minutes left, and I know there was definitely something that I wanted to ask you about emerging trends coming from what your perspective for 2014 in this space. Yeah. So I think there's a lot happening. I mean, I, I've said, uh, and I will continue saying, that I think crowdfunding is the next frontier for government. And I expect in 2014 that um, we're going to start to see government dip its toe in this space. I know um, on the state and local level, governors are starting to think about this. I know at the State Department level, we're thinking about it a lot. Um, and I would predict we're going we're gonna to actually see a pilot on this in the next year. Um, and I think you know they're looking at the innovation funds that are out there, looking at how we leverage that through crowdfunding, and then really taking it globally. Um, the, the World Bank report, you know, says that in the next 25 years, it's over a $95 billion market. So I think we're really going to see it grow, and I think we're going to see the sophisticated side of it grow, which is looking at how we make equity work. And if not here in the U.S., how do we make it work globally? Beautiful, beautiful. Um, Absolutely amazing. Uh, let's. We're we're out of time on this, and I've got a hard break, so I've got to I've got to say goodbye. But one one last one last thing, Danielle, please contact information so that our audience can find out more about what you're doing. Absolutely. The easiest way to reach me is at D N D C on Twitter. Perfect. All right. This is a, a fabulous. I'm getting all kinds of feedback from the audience, great educational content. Vince, I want to thank you so much for, for introducing Daniela to our audience on our show. Really appreciate this. Always my pleasure. All right. Thank you. All right. Vincent Molinari and Daniela Foster, tremendous. We're going to archive this. You can find out all the information on our website, yorbamedia.com. And again, special thanks to Monk Media and 1-800-PublicRelations.com for all their PR and media support. We'll be right back on the other side of these breaks with our next hour. And when we're, what we're going to cover on the next hour, we have brand new guests. They're coming up for the first two segments. We've got Jordan Kimmel, uh, Chief Marketing Strategist. KDC Financial will be bringing back Nick Santiago and then an old friend of mine, Garrett Jones. Garrett is going to give his rendition. He's been doing this business since 19, oh, I think 1970s when he first got into the industry. So uh, thank you so much for everybody for listening to our first hour CEO interviews. And if it wasn't for Vince, we, we would have never met Daniela and some of the other fantastic people he's bringing to the show. Our special thanks out to Vince Molinari, founder and co-founder of Gate Global Impact, and our or impact investing and crowdfunding can correspond. You'll be hearing more on this show from Vince and his guests. We'll be right back. 